Hello guys and welcome back to my channel Civil Construction and Tutor and in this video we will be designing the steel connection for the truss and this is the truss for which we are going to design. Firstly let us know how does a steel connection or steel support looks in real field. So basically uh, this truss is going to rest over a column provided at the individual point. So this is how the truss is going to rest. So this is the column and this is how it will rest on the column. It is a different truss but uh, this is a 3d model that i have done so it, it will be easy to understand so this is how the steel plate is embedded into the concrete this is in beam but it is done in similar approach for the column as well so here you can see it is being embedded on the concrete column so these are the support you can see here also this is the base plate these are the studs and these are the stiffness this is the column that is coming from the truss and this is the concrete on which the anchor rod or anchor uh, bolt is being anchored. So now let us do the designing of this connection then. So for this we will be using a software that is Procon. So you can download it and do the designing. So in Procon we have here steel at this ribbon. So here you can see base plate design. So We'll click on this and a new window will pop up that will be the base plate design so here are different data that has to be entered so we'll do that one by one let us go for this material properties absolute so this is for the concrete that is as we know the steel is supposed to rest on the rcc structure either that is a footing or a column grade of the concrete so let us assume it to be 25 Similarly, FY that is the yield strength of the steel. So for base plate, so this is the base plate. So we have to enter the strength of this. So let us use 250. Similarly, FU, this is the minimum tensile strength and it is 410 for 250 grade of steel. Similarly, FY column, so we'll be using the same type of grade for column as well. So column is nothing but this, which is coming from the truss and being rested on the base plate fu is 410 sorry and similarly weld that is the material property of the weld let it be 500 now bolt grade of bolt 4.6 4.8 5.6 so these are the generally used type so let us take 4.8 i have already made a video for the connection design and you can find that here so property class property class of the bolt is represented as xy where x represents the 1 by 10th of the ultimate tensile capacity of bolt in kgf per mm square and y represents 1 by 10th of the ultimate tensile strength as the yield strength of bolt. So the lower value that is 3.6, 4.6, 4.8, 5.6 those are the bearing bolt and the value greater like 8.8, 9.8 these are the HSFG that is high strength friction grip. So the working phenomena of these two bolts are different. This works from the bearing principle and this works from the friction principle. So that is a different thing you can understand from this video connection design that I have already uploaded. So for now we will be using the bearing bolt. So 4.8. Now column. We are going to input the property of this column. So you can find that from the ETS. So as we are going to design for this right click on this. So it is ISNV. 65 m so you can go to define and find the frame section and select for isnv 65 and find out the exact property of it that is the sizing so outside diameter is 76.1 and it is 3.6 so let us go to procon and you can find that select it is a circular type and I guess we have the value as 76.1 and 3.6 so 76.1 so this is the nearest value so we'll take this okay so you can see the column now select the base plate so we have to design this so here you can see and go to base plate select now what is the dimension that is height breadth we have to provide that so you can clearly see that it should be provided such that the bolt stiffness can be placed within it. So the dimension should be selected in such a way and it should be greater than that of the dimension of the column. So we'll take a offset and similarly we'll provide an extra clear cover so that all these arrangement can be provided. 
so for now let us take as the dimension of the column is 76.2 so let us take this as 125 so while selecting the base plate we should ensure that it should be sufficiently large so that the column under the load doesn't fracture the concrete hole inside section so if you consider the hole inside section then this position or this portion will be void so we'll untake this okay so here you can see this is the column this is the base plate now thickness of the base plate so we'll take this as 12 mm the thickness of base plate should be such that it doesn't fracture or yield under the loading similarly concrete support so this is the concrete support as it is resting on a column so we'll provide the dimension of that column let us assume it to be a general size of column that is 350 by 350 stiffness these are the stiffness and those are provided when the support is to be considered as a moment resisting support that is a, a restraint against rotation as we are considering as a pin support we can avoid this but let us consider that stiffness so you can see here number of stiffness so let us provide it as for rotation so if you want to provide certain rotation like 45 degree if you can see it will rotate for now let us keep this as zero and top chamber so this is the top chamfer so let us keep this as okay let us keep this as 50 height so keeping this as 50 as well bottom width 50 thickness of 10 okay so as you can see it is being projected outside of the base plate so we have to increase the base plate so let us go here and select 150 150 the weld is still outside so let us take this as 200 by 200 okay this should be sufficient now we have selected stiffness it will show none so in case if we are assuming a rectangular or square type then you can find stiffness in this type and if you select this and then only it will show you a type 2 so don't get confused with that so it is 76.2 and 3 okay and it will show a none and go to stiffness as 4 rotation 0 top camber as 50 bottom height 50 50 okay so you can see this okay now stiffness has been done now the bolt so we have to select the layout first so basically layout is arranging the rows and columns so select we will consider two number of rows and two number of column and then see it will be sufficient or not so two row spacing as 100 similar to 100 we can go for 125 similar to this also 125 okay number of bolts so we don't have to arrange this for now okay radius if we are considering a circular type okay so the number of bolt and the size of the bolt should be sufficient to resist the tensile force as we know the base plate is under compressive stress as well as the bending stress so the bolt should be sufficient to resist this stress now diameter so we have 12 16 20 24 so m20 bolt this is the nominal diameter that is the which can pass through the hole let us select as 16 n type so we have three options square plate circular plate stud I'll start with stud and then you can understand other things. So these are the anchor bolts. Now this has to be penetrated into the structure so that there is no slipping of the structure or the support. So the length has to be considered and the length is considered ensuring that it doesn't slip out. So this is the anchor length. So for now we are providing 8 number of M16 anchor bolt of 500 mm length. So that means it is being anchored 500 mm into the RCC column so for now let us take this as 
300. However, this value must be greater than this according to the empirical formula. I'll make a separate video how to calculate the anchor length. So here you can see it is being anchored into the concrete. Now if we select the square strap plate, then you will see a square plate over here of certain thickness. Let us take this as 8 mm. So this is the square plate studded or end type. Similarly, if we consider a select uh, circular plate, then you can see a circular plate. Now let us select this as stud only 300. Okay. Now weld size. Let us take this as of 10 mm. So you'll see this is the weld. Generally, the thickness of the weld should not be less or equal to 3 mm. And depending upon the size of the thicker, size of the weld is to be provided. For our case, which is a 12 mm base plate is being welded, we can go for a 5 mm or 6 mm weld to ensure there is no cracking. But for now, let us take 10 mm. Now we have to assign load. So if you remember when modeling and analyzing the steel truss in ETAPS, we have already defined load combination, load patterns, load cases. So we'll just take the maximum of it and design for that value. Else you can also go for us uh, different load cases and combination and check for it individually. So let us go to ETAPS and let us see the load combination. So we have a different load combination assigned. But what I'll do is I'll take a or I'll make a combo that is in of combination and select all the load combination and design for the worst value. So add new combo in of combination type in of and I'll add all of those. So you the so I'll be designing for the steel combination three. And the scale factor will be one because uh, we have already provided scale factor that in the individual load combination. So these are the load combination for now. Okay. Envelope. Let me run this and we'll see for the maximum one. So select plan and go to base apply and we'll see the maximum reaction display as we are already assigning a envelope combination that is it will design for the worst combination that is the maximum support reaction either that can be negative or a positive value depending upon the magnitude of load applied display force or stress diagram support or spring reactions and go for combination and select envelope so absolute max max minimum you can go for this so we are just taking absolute max that is irrespective of the negative values or sub negative uh, sign either it is a negative sign or a positive sign and you can select fz because it is a hinge support so we'll be selecting fz only if you even select mx and fy you will not get any value because we haven't designed for the restraint against rotation apply so this is the maximum value for which we are going to design the joint connection. So it is 304.1. That is the maximum value. Now let us see max, which is 304. And if we see minimum, then you can see it is a different value. And you can see from the uh, arrows as well. So if you see in 3D, for the negative value, it will be a downwards force. And for maximum, it will be a upward value. That means a negative sign should be provided for the minimum and if you go for a case and select wind which is a upward force that will give a downward reaction so this is the maximum negative value for the wind case but we are assuming 304 that should be sufficient for this value so a combo and go for envelope select the absolute max which is 304.1 so this is the maximum value for which the structure is to be designed so 304, no torsion, no Vx, no Mx, no Vz, Mz. So don't get confused. In this case, y axis is this vertical factor. It is a factor load. So we'll just provide one here. But still you cannot go for design because we have to give a load case as one over here. Then only you can go for design. 
so here you can see that the load are significantly greater that is 304 200 300 but if the loading or if the reaction in the support are less then we can just embed the steel into concrete so for example let us see this truss here you can see the connection so these are the posts now let us run uh, and see the reaction display force or stress reaction we can just go for uh, wind load firstly so the load is just 3.35 3.35 3.35 3.35 and now let us also see in the combo envelope so here you can see that the reaction is just 6.72 so this is a smaller value so for such case we can just uh, embed the column post into the concrete to a certain depth such that slipping does not occur so here you can see in the figure as well so this is the column post this is the concrete column and it has been embedded into the concrete to a certain depth such that the slipping does not occur this is also a way for the connection but this is uh, only suitable if the load is less and we also have to take care about the rusting of steel if you want to understand about this let me know in the comment i will make a different video how to calculate this depth so but for now let us go back to this connection design that is steel connection design so now we are in the design stage and you can before that let me make you clear about the design code so we have we can't use is code as it is not unlocked so i'm just using the trial version so you have to go for euro code 3 and as we have entered the value as per the is code that is the uh, minimum tensile strength value so these are according to is code so it should be in the safer side okay. so now let us design and start so you can see it is okay we are in the safe side so this is the stress diagram and this is the strain diagram so now let us see the output so you can see here holding down bolt design euro code so these are the parameters that we entered and fillet weld bolt property 16 anchor length 300 now these are the calculations and you can find the diagram as well so this is the design and workshop drawing you can find here so you are using 16 mm bolt so whole size is equal to 18 considering some tolerances so what does a failure warning sign look like in this program then now let us increase the load let us apply 1500 for now then we can go for design and then start so you can see concrete failure oiled failure so this is a failure that you can see when the load is exceeding the design value so we have a concrete failure and then weld failure so now let us increase the thickness of weld so weld failure has been corrected now let us go for concrete failure and for concrete failure what we can do is we can increase this concrete support it is not possible to increase the concrete support infinitely unless it is a wrapped footing as we are considering a column so it will be a size of the col column that has been casted that is 350 by 350 now what we can do is we can increase the base plate dimension so let us take this up to 325 325 and also increase the base plate thickness 20 design so now it is safe so in this way we can go for the design of the connection and change the values of different parameters which are interconnected to each other so basically what i have shown you is just a rough approach of designing the steel connection you can change this bolt size the position of the bolt size that will be different if we are changing the dimension of the base plate so that is a different approach which makes this video a little bit longer so i'm just trying to make a short video about designing this steel connection using procon software